Show Land and welcome to another episode of the G Show Podcast. I am G1 and there is too many G's in this intro. I gotta, I gotta figure this out. <gasps> this is the Godzilla Block Party. Wow! Wow! Talk about an amazing day for being a Godzilla fan. We finally got the trailer for Godzilla vs. Cat. What? 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 We, we didn't. What are you talking about? Yeah, we did. There was a tweet. The tweet came out. What are you talking about? The tweet came out and said that the trailer will drop it today. I saw the tweet. I posted it on the G Show Facebook page. What are you talking about? It didn't come out. It was there. We saw it. We saw it. The... It never posted? The, the Joker comes out. To... What are you talking about? I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, um, <clears throat> apparently the trailer didn't come out today. But that doesn't matter. Because we're here to talk about all of that bullshit. And there's some ranting and raving to be had on this particular episode. And before we get into all of that ranting and raving, let me introduce you to my cohorts and hosts of the Godzilla Block Party, G73, Megzi, my brother Chase. How the hell you doing? Oh, man, uh, you know, I'm, I'm good, but I'm a little bit salty because I'm sick and tired of the Godzilla versus Kong bullshit that keeps getting... <laughs> reported around the internet and i have something to say on it but other than that i'm happy there's a lot of cool stuff going on there is absolutely a lot of cool stuff going on we just saw one of those things and it make my next guest cohort you know him as game game z1 andrew very happy we are all in the same boat when it comes to this brother what's going on oh i'm kind of also pretty salty about how people are lying why you always lying you know <laughs> why why you uh, lie <laughs> but other than that i'm doing pretty great i i've been pretty much just playing video games collecting figures going further and further into debt <laughs> and that's why we uh remember that ladies and gentlemen that 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 uh that help me thing the GoFundMe page is still available, still open to help Gam Gam Z One's addiction to collecting collectors items. So, <laughs> all right, but let's... I mean, I mean, same. I might actually legitimately open that, and it, it won't be a joke anymore. <laughs> and it just he, what he's not telling everybody is he's about to be evicted. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, it's so true. Speaking of evictions, let's let's get right to the top of it. Somebody needs to evict this dude from Twitter for posting the heinous bullshit, the bogusness. Now, we've been talking, if y'all been following, we've been talking about the Godzilla vs. Kong trailer for quite some time now. Quite some time now. I, I mean, like, shit, before Godzilla, King, King of the Monsters came out on, on uh, you know, Blu-ray and 4K and DVD. We've been I talking. Mean, when we've is this? mostly been talking about the lack of one. It reminds me of Shin Godzilla, all, uh, you know, all over again. Remember when we were like, "Where's the Shin Godzilla trailer?" <laughs> and it wasn't until like three weeks before the movie dropped. <laughs> which, which I guess made sense in that regard, but for this, this is completely different. But let, let's talk about what what's going on. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, the Joker is out as of right now, as of this podcast. Joker, the movie, the Warner Brothers DC movie is out right now, and we all thought that maybe. There would be a Godzilla vs. Kong trailer that dropped with the Joker. And uh, no, nothing. Absolutely not. And they, nobody can tell me that, well, maybe they didn't just drop it online and they just saved it for the movies. That makes zero sense. You know it. I know it. That's Everybody how marketing knows. works. Exactly. Especially in today's day and age. That's not how marketing works. So we don't have a trailer now. And this is also Comic-Con. New York City Comic-Con week. We would have gotten that trailer right now with Joker. It's not here. I doubt we're going to get it at Comic-Con, which is this weekend. While you're listening to this podcast. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. <laughs> and today is the last day for the Godzilla panel, I believe. So, so. look at that. Even that. Even that right there. So I, we have Godzilla's birthday coming up in about a month. Literally a month as of this podcast. And if that's not the case... Star Wars Jumanji, the end of December. But we spoke on that. Chase, last night you sent us a text, a tweet, a message in Messenger 
and it was somebody's tweet, and it had the Godzilla versus Kong banner, and it said, uh, "Breaking news, blah blah blah, whatever." Godzilla versus well, Kong. Guess trailer. what? I mean, guess what? Trailers dropping. Um, yeah. Listen, and it's not just him specifically. It's multiple pages, and it's really irritating. Uh, and I'll get into it. Um, look, I mean, it's not the fact that. I know everyone's excited for Godzilla versus Kong, and it, I don't have issues with people speculating. But when you blatantly say that Adam Wingard said the Godzilla versus Kong trailer is dropping October third, and you stand by that, and there's no indication of a trailer, I, I'm sorry, but you're doing that just for attention. And it's not just this particular page. There's multiple pages that have done it or have been relaying what that person has said. And this is one of the reasons why I don't join Godzilla groups or other message pages or social media sites for this reason. I don't like people spreading bullshit. And that's one of the reasons why I made Megalon is because I'll post the stuff that's legitimate. You know, I'm not going to put something up that's a rumor. I don't do rumors. If I do rumors, then I will make it a statement. Look, it's a rumor. Don't take it seriously. But there are so many pages out there that that tackle on rumors like they're facts. Right. And that's not right. It's one thing when you post one rumor or another. But when you're posting every single rumor and not explaining the common sense or logic behind it, you're doing it for attention and likes. And that's wrong. I mean, I get it. If uh, But... Uh, I get it if you're trying to do it because you're hyped, but the thing is, is if you're doing it for views, you're an asshole. I, and I have issues with that because it doesn't make it fun being a part of this fandom because especially when you know you're lying and people are calling you on your bullshit and you're trying to sit there and look them dead in the face or in a screen for the matter and explain that you're actually truthful – it come, you know, why, why waste that energy? And I get it that people troll and it's probably what these things have been just been doing or this one executive person has been doing, but it's, it's, it's just bullshit, man. And I'm just, I'm just tired of seeing it. I'm tired of seeing multiple pages. And there's one page I used to follow actually that uh, wasn't Gormaro Island that actually for a while I thought was pretty reliable, but lately they've been feeding into the rumors and bullshit and I, I stopped following them. It's it's just it's just one of the things I hate doing about the fandom. And as of right now, I haven't been posting on Megalon because there's nothing really to talk about. Now I did um, uh, I did I, I did post the image you sent us. Uh, I did. and I understand that. No, I, that's but, totally fine. But like you, like you said, but the way I post things, I don't post it as a fact. Okay, I posted it and I wrote um, the, the the trailer supposedly dropping today. We shall see. Or we shall see. You know what I mean? And yeah, the second exactly. shall is all capitalized because either we shall see, meaning, yeah, okay, we'll see it when it happens and we'll believe it when it happens. Or we shall see. It's going to happen and we'll see then. So that's it, – it, it's tactful. Yeah. I like to play with words. I like to be a little bit different with things. But I'm not going out there saying, oh, check this out. This guy got it. He, he's got the inside scoop. He said this trailer's dropping today. This trailer's dropping today. All hail Godzilla. That's not that's not how you because do business. It, make, it makes you also look foolish if you do that, and then nothing comes up with that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Game Games, man, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, um, do you think it's well, misleading? Well, my, or? my thoughts, my thoughts on the clickbait, clickbait on, yep. on, yep. on the <laughs> on the the people who are doing this simply to get the clout, the attention, the views. <laughs> Uh, he, he's, he, we lost technicality. <laughs> Did we lose Gap Game? Hello? Did we lose yeah, you? We got you? We got you. Your phone made the whole entire feed wig out. Like there was oh, Godzilla shit. tremors in the background. I, I, I literally was trying to put the video, why the fuck you alive? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I see what you did there. Pretty good. Pretty good. But anyhow, you, like, you, you. I was going to say it's karma. For us being GVA, former <laughs> former shit posters, people be shit posting. Rest in pepperoni, Anthony. I miss you every day, brother. <laughs> like, like people, people literally will do anything to get attention on the internet. Anything. 
And it's crazy um, that it's attacking this fan. It's a, it's affecting this fandom. It is. It is like top of the dome, top 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 of the dome. The the kings of clickbait, especially on this platform, YouTube, fucking cinema sins. <clears throat> all right, they know what they're doing, and and it's all the same bullshit that everybody is doing. All right, everybody. Make something that people are gonna go. Ooh, let me click on this and, and and see see what's going on here. And then they get excited, and then they they realize that they've been chipped. And what are you gonna do then? And that's why the Godzilla block party holds steady at thirty five views per week. I'm okay with that. <laughs> that's legit. <laughs> people watching this show. Or listening to this podcast on YouTube too. Thank you, you guys. I pre. Oh, how how does he say that in uh, Godzilla vs. Violence? Thanks, you guys. <laughs> oh God. Well, yes. thanks, you guys. You know, I always thought that he said "kiss you guys." I swear to God, I heard. I always thought he said the same thing, but I'm not gonna even think about that. It's thanks, you guys. It's gotta be. But um, yeah, it's 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 unfortunate that you know we do have. And I'm not naming names, but we do have a lot of outlets that that uh, tease the fandom in such a way where they spread rumors as facts, as Chase said. And, I mean, it is what it is. Yes, you can say, you know, I'm guilty of, of talking about the same thing over and over and over, week and week and week. But the fact remains the same. We talk about it until we get a trailer. Then we talk about the trailer. The trailer should have dropped. That's what we all thought uh, or felt. And it hasn't. And now it, it becomes a question of, okay, is this course correction on their part? Legendary Warner Brothers. And right now it seems to be the case. It is course correction. Because even though we're not getting trailers, we are getting things. Now that's what I want to talk about next. And Chase, you are the go-to guy for the news and the things. When we finished the podcast last week and hung it up, the next day, news started dropping. And you started, it was like, look, I can't believe this is happening. We just, you know, wrapped the podcast and all this news was coming out. You recall what we were talking about? Yeah, I mean, uh, there, <laughs> oh my God. It's funny because I totally, I actually forgot about that. And now you bring it up, I remember the whole thing. Um yeah, there. For one, uh, for one, there was a trailer description of Godzilla vs Kong, um, and then for two, there was an actual like 4chan form or something like that that came out and was talking about it. Um, there. Okay. Okay. First things first. Always take 4chan with a grain of salt. Oh, of course. Oh. I mean, the 4chan one was 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 bull, anyways. But um, <clears throat> I think his wasn't really a description. His his was something different. I'm not too sure. There were two things that dropped about it. I wasn't too sure. But the one thing was the description, and um, the description of the trailer just basically said that um, what people at the cinema expo have been seeing, or the licensing expo have been seeing is that it starts off with uh, Adam Wingard, uh, not Adam Wingard, uh, Alexander Skarsgård and his group of goons. They arrive at this temple, and um, they feast their eyes upon a chained-up King Ghidorah that is alive and chained up and shit like that. And then it goes further into... Spoilers uh, if this is real, by the way. Spoilers if this is real. <laughs> Yeah, spoilers if it is real. Sorry uh, for not preempting that. <laughs> some something kind of sounds funny to me about it, uh -huh. but but we'll we'll figure that out when I guess when we actually see it. However, then it cuts to a scene where, or it says it cuts to a scene where uh, Godzilla and Kong um, basically are in the water, and it's almost like when they bring Kong from Infant Island and they blow up the ship. Uh, Kong comes out of the water and Godzilla arrives and they start squaring off for the first time. And, um, yeah, it, it just kind of set up a little teaser of what they were seeing. Um, other than that, it doesn't really say much else. It talks about some of the characters crying, Millie Bobby Brown's characters crying. Uh, Mark Russell was basically in it too, doing something I thought was something to do with the lines of drinking alcohol, which that's irrelevant. Uh, it just kind of pulled up a minor teaser of it. 
But that was a big thing that people were talking about over the weekend. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, That's there's that. Want to see it. No. Uh, exactly. Um, I don't know if you have anything to say, Ray, uh, but I was going to lead into something with that. Well, I um, just want I want I just want to uh, say it sounds awesome. I won't lie. That description sounds awesome, whether it's true or not. It do you want awesome. me to like read it out loud? What, what it exactly is, or what? Like what the the this teaser description? You have it? Yeah, yeah, I have it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't want to be spoiled, this is the time to uh, I don't know. Uh, Cover your eyes? No, <laughs> plug your ears. But uh, your ears it, it's a teaser. It's a teaser description. It, it's it's not it's not the movie. So yeah, man, why not? Lay it on us. Starts off like this with a somber tone. The footage opens up with Alexander Skarsgård's character entering an ominous glacier-like temple fortress. Thunder and lightning crackle and crash across the high heavens above with the footage now laying sight upon a raging chain-bound King Ghidorah, with a tyrant shown to be bound to the surrounding fortress while also being surrounded by unidentified troops. A voice narrates of a great appending war. Footage cuts to dejected Kyle Chandler, then shifts to the sight of Madison despairing and in tears. The footage then shifts upon a restless ocean coast overcast by a biblical thunderstorm. From the restless ocean coast, Kong rises from a half-sunken aircraft carrier and while doing so, finds his glare met by Godzilla. A moment passes, and then Kong decides to, to attack. The two titans clash, their battle trampling over, over a warship of scattering troops. Kong exhibits powers of agility and speed and lands a square hit onto Godzilla. Godzilla, in feedback to Kong's attack, remains firm and expressively unfazed. In response, <laughs> Godzilla replies with an attack of his own and sends Kong flying. Um... And then that's basically the most of the end of it. It goes into about like taking it with a grain of salt, you know, like right. just a description of what other people have seen. So I'll tell you, that's very descriptive. <laughs> you can't make that up. That's very descriptive. Uh, whether it's true or not, I, get, I get, my hat is taken off. I tip my hat to it. Uh, it sounds awesome. The chained up King Ghidorah on one hand, though. I don't know about that only because of the gravity beams, the corona beams, whatever you want to call his beams. Uh, and also, I wanted to mention, it doesn't make sense with what Mike Doherty just said. <laughs> right, we're going to get to that too. Um, but like with King Ghidorah, it showed intelligence regardless if this is Kevin's head or not. And, and it regenerated. Because King Ghidorah regenerated that missing head in a matter of minutes. Now, I'm not saying that it should take a matter of minutes for Kevin to regenerate a body. Absolutely not. But you you got to you got to believe that there has been a significant amount of time from the end of King of the Monsters until that end credit sequence that passed where Charles Dance's character finds, you know, sees the the severed head. And even then, it has to be even more time because that head was severed. And uh, during the oxygen destroyer battle, so it's, it, and they they claim that Godzilla versus Kong is supposed to take place like the next day after King of the Monsters. So that 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 right there is kind of like yeah. And I'm whether or not Kevin's brain is now spread into three heads, which would be. <laughs> or however, I mean, we don't know what sequence, if that is a legitimate scene when that pops up. That could be towards the end of the movie. We don't know what Carl's, uh, Charles Dance's character is up to, you know, you know. And it also could be fake. So we don't know. I mean, it's... Exactly, exactly. Because I've also read something about Charles Dance having a monster called Destroyer. Wait, 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 is... wait, wait. We, we ain't there yet. I want to get Gam Gam's opinions on this. Oh, no worries, no yeah. worries. Gam Gam, what do you think I, of this description? I, I don't I don't have an opinion because I'll believe it when I see it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, I don't believe him, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Fair enough. Uh... Now, Chase, let's talk about that other thing you sent me last night, the whole thing with what, what Michael Doherty was talking about. 
Oh, all the fun we were having on uh, Gam Cam's <laughs> expense. <laughs> I know what you're about to say, but anyways. I want you yeah. to So Mike Doherty was in an interview with uh, Comic Book News or CBO News or whatever, um, and they were talking about the head at the end of uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters, and uh, he says, that wasn't a direct setup for Mecha King Ghidorah, no. Um, I'm not saying it's not, but if you think about King Ghidorah and what he's capable of, Regeneration being a key one of the ability to call the other Titans, he's a gold mine of opportunity. That DNA is an untappable resource. As far as Charles Dance's character is concerned, a few scrappings of cells, and who knows what you can create with it. Gang Gams. That's from director Michael Darty, King yep. of the Monsters. That that is that is exciting right there. Okay, why is it exciting, Gang Gams? That that it be anything. It could be Mecha King Ghidorah. It could be Destroy it. It could be say it. Give it to me. No, well, I'm not gonna. Come on, Chase. You know what it is. It's back in. Back in. It's confirmed. Michael Doherty is taking lore and putting it into reality. Something we have never seen before. Never seen it before. And he said, "You know what, Toho." I, we, well, let me show you. We did see it. We saw it in Super Godzilla. But the population hasn't seen it. If you never played Super Godzilla, you don't know what bagging is. Hey, uh, Toho, can uh, just, you know, you're not using it. Yeah, sure, why not? Go ahead. We're, we're, we're branding this thing globally. Go ahead, do it. Could you imagine that instead of Destroyer, which we all think it might be the new big bad, because the name is just cool, right? Destroyer. It turns out to be this obscure video game boss? Are you nuts? Well, hey, that, that's also interesting because if it is bag on, I mean, if it is bagging, I mean, Destroyer was supposed to be bagging before it destroyed became Destroyer, so. Absolutely. And there's some similarities. Oh my gosh, look at that. it's both. No. Destroyer turns into Baggin, or Baggin turns into Destroyer. <laughs> Kong and Godzilla <laughs> mutilate him, and that's he turns into his legendary Destroyer. <laughs> Dude, I'm so down for all of that. Come on, Game Games. I see the smile creeping on your face. You know you want it. <laughs> like, he knows he wants it. <laughs> Where's Batra? <laughs> I take Batra for Baggin. As long as they give him his own iconic roar, Rodan. <laughs> they don't. They, they, that'd be so funny. They give Batra the Rodan roar, but they keep the Muto roar for Rodan. <laughs> oh, I'm still salty on that one. I'm very bitter. I, they, I, they keep the cranes. Yeah, the crane. I'm, I'm so bitter on that one. I, I, I don't think I'll ever get over that. That's gonna be something I gotta take to the grave with me, though. So I'm sorry out there, y'all. But it's just oh. Anyhow, dude. I mean, what he said. It's it's. My God, there's so much possibility there because we were all screaming Mecha King Ghidorah, especially at the end of King of the Monsters when you're looking at the news, uh, the newspaper uh, pieces, and it even says that they're developing some kind of mechanized thing on Skull Island, and you're like, what, what, what? So it's like, it's not, it's in there now. It's there. It's in there. They are doing mechs. It just automatically confirms that there's going to be something Godzilla and Kong fight. Right, exactly. And uh, that's and something which we kind of we all we all knew yeah, that's we kind of how it was going to go. We were screaming that before I'm the movie saying, dropped. Uh, King of the Monsters. All I'm saying, even though everybody always pushes me back on this, all I'm saying <laughs> is that they had to get the rights for Mecha Godzilla for Ready Player One. Okay. And who's to say that they don't still have the rights? The wow. Godzilla. Well, I don't think Ready Player One was a legendary film, though, so that's different. No, I think it's Warner it Brothers. It was a Warner Brothers it's film. Warner Brothers, yep. King was Kong, it? King Kong's in it, too. And King Kong's in it. Oh, my God! King Kong and Godzilla was in Ready Player One. <laughs> think about oh, it. Oh, yeah, King Kong. King Kong was. Yep. Mecha Godzilla. That's crazy. So, yeah, they did. Yeah, absolutely right. Oh, that's all I'm saying is who's to say Warner Brothers still doesn't have the right to Mecha Godzilla? And I don't think with what Toho wants to do that they were going, if that's the case, relinquish those rights anytime soon. Mecha Godzilla is a draw. That's why Toho keeps using them. The way King Ghidorah is. The way Mothra is. That's why Toho keeps using them. 
Where's my Anguirus? We where is we don't know. That, but we're you saw be, his skeleton in King of the Monsters. That's I know, where but I, I'm talking about in Toho. Anguirus I'm talking about Toho. is dead. I'm talking about from Toho. Where's Anguirus? I don't know, but here's a new Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> we're gonna make an animated trilogy. Here's a Mecha Godzilla city. And Garrus was also in the anime trilogy, but just like in King of the Monsters, he, he was, was dead, dead. And, a, and a skeleton. I didn't see that, and that's disrespectful and disgusting. I might watch that. It's in one of like the beginning sequences where they talk about Godzilla fighting all the monsters and shit. Yeah, yeah, Ugh. you saw and here's a skeleton and like two Rodan skeletons. Oh! You, actually, you actually see like his corpse. <laughs> My God, man. These are things I gotta look out for, seriously. Uh, but... I'm excited about that news. Like, I really am excited uh, from for what Michael Doherty said in regards to that. I would, you know, and, and we know that Michael Doherty is involved with Godzilla vs. Kong. And it's crazy. Yeah, he's he's, yeah, he's, uh, yeah. He, yeah, he was kind of doing some script rewrites. That's nuts. And we don't know how much, but even so, as long as his hand is on that, you know, on, on that script, we're in for some treats. Look, again, I was thinking about this today. At the end of the day, I'll sit back and I'll watch King of the Monsters and I'll enjoy it, right? But there's something that I don't get like a certain satisfaction from it, right? I just watch it. I'm like, yep, they did it. Uh, whereas with 2014, I'm like, shit, they just they 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 just started this whole brand new mythology that I'm so into, and that King of the Monsters expands on, but in, in my case, brings it back down. Now that all being said, there's still another movie. And hopefully, fingers crossed, after that movie, we get to continue. And we've talked about this before. It doesn't matter in what medium, but if they can continue the MonsterVerse after Godzilla vs. Kong, I'm all in. I'm all in. I love the universe that's set up. Uh, and yeah, man. So with his hands on it, on the script, uh, and Chase co-signing Adam Wingard saying that, you know, even if you didn't watch the anime... Of uh, what Death Note? The movie's rather okay. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. Saw Death Note last night. I, I didn't hate it, but I again, I don't watch animes. But you know, I mean, like I said, it was yeah. <laughs> we're beating. It, we're kind of going back into it, but yeah, it would. Uh, it, it, I, I watched it last night. I didn't think it was that bad. I watched it strictly just to see if Adam Wingard is going to ruin Godzilla versus Kong or not. I can put my stamp on it that I mean, I don't think he is going to ruin it. So. All right. Well, now, real quick, let's get into this. Comic-Con is on right now. New York City Comic-Con is happening right now. It's going to be going on all weekend long. There is an... I think it's X-Plus that's doing a Godzilla panel. I'm not sure. Who's doing a Godzilla panel? Is it X-Plus? No. Nah, well, NECA has... It's, it's a whole bunch of stuff. It's not just someone specifically. Uh, NECA's there right now. They showed off some stuff. Uh, Bandai showed off some stuff, and X Plus showed off some stuff. Yes, Bandai did show off some stuff. Okay, so let's get into this. And the first thing, though, I really want to get into this because uh, right before we went on air, we were talking about this. Good God, man. Y'all got to remember, if you're watching this podcast, you're Godzilla fans, so you know. Y'all got to remember when Godzilla Final Wars was coming out, the first piece of art we've seen, the first piece of merch that anything we've seen for this movie was a Godzilla 2000 version of Godzilla standing there back facing us with his head. He's kind of like looking back. It was an amazing piece. The spines were glowing blue. It was an amazing piece. I absolutely loved that picture. And it just said Godzilla Final Wars. That's all we knew about this movie and I'm going back now. This was 2003. Towards the end of 2003, if I'm not mistaken. We had no idea what was going on. Oh, my God. They made a maquette of that poster. Game over. I'm done. I'm sold 100%. It is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. I absolutely love it. And as Gam Gams pointed out, it's just the repaint of a certain Godzilla 2000 that I actually own that particular one. Oh my God! Shut up. Well, oh, well, it, it's it's an X plus uh, statue. All right, uh, I think uh, even going so far as to say it's part of the X plus Giant series. Now, let me warn you right now: the X plus Giant series usually retails for about a thousand bucks. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
because they're so big. Um, but yes, it is basically Yuji Sakai's own personal design for Godzilla 2000 that I, I think Yuji Sakai himself painted that poster back back in 2004 when it was when it when it was you know teasing Godzilla Final Wars. And he also helped sculpt this X plus figure along with the Godzilla 2000 SH Monster Arts. Um, but I am also excited for this boy. I'm probably never gonna get him because if it is an X plus giant series, he's going to be he's 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 just out of my price range. Just just out of my price. Can't Ladies and gentlemen, it. you can help Cam Cam Z one. All you have to do is donate twenty five cents. It doesn't matter. <laughs> God, a thousand um, bucks. <laughs> but yeah, the the, the X plus thing is is so cool, and I, I I don't know what Chase's thoughts are, but I I if if he doesn't have any thoughts, I'll I'll go on to like the Bandai stuff. Well, I want to know if Chase has any thoughts, Chase. Yeah. Uh, that. To, well, so I have I have the Godzilla two thousand Benny Presto, uh, from a long time ago. Uh, I remember I got it after Godzilla 2000 came out. Uh, I got it for Christmas. So like, but uh, so to me, it just looks to me like, I mean, it's cool, it's awesome. But if it's a thousand bucks, you know, I, I have I have rent to pay, I have food to get, you know. <laughs> We're all. Uh, yeah, um, it, it all depends thing. on. It all depends on if it's actually the Giant series. If it's not the Giant series and it's just a standard. Uh, X plus figure, it'll probably retail for around a hundred and seventy bucks. So the most expensive Godzilla figure I own, aside from that Benny Presto, uh, I have the eighty nine SH Monster Arts. That's where my limit draws. So if it's more oh. than ninety seven bucks, I'm not getting an X plus. <laughs> you, you, you have the Ko Kyo Kyoku, uh, the one that makes sound. It's the anniversary one. Yeah, yeah. The the, the Kyo Kyoku. Ah, uh, so, I, yeah, I do not have that downtown one. Downtown Osaka. Yeah, <laughs> I, well, I love um, it. It's on my desk. It's my favorite thing I own. But uh, but yeah, um, moving on because you know it it it's it's expensive either way because it's X plus. Um, Bandai, Bandai America, is finally making stuff again. Oh my goodness, this is legendary. They, they haven't made anything besides reissues at Walmart for years. <laughs> and the they fact... Got, they, they have a Kong figure, and they have a, re, a, a, a redo of their 2004 figures. Wait, These are big figures. Wait, 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 wait. Was that the, was that the image you sent us before, Chase? Like, earlier this week? Yeah, but there's there's also another image that I didn't send that I'll talk about too that people are talking about. All right, go ahead, Game Games. Well, first and first, send that image. No, I mean I want to know what you took, what your what your thoughts on the uh, which one call it is. Oh, the okay. So this is literally the first time Bandai America has released a Kong figure of 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 any capacity. Yeah, we we had the Kong figure. From Bandai Japan, that that is the sixty-two Kong. But this is the first time Bandai has made a a Kong Skull Island figure because if you if you look at the actual image, it is actually not Godzilla versus Kong. It is a Kong Skull Island figure. Right. And that's that's quite interesting. Um, as for the Godzilla. I at first thought that it was the 2014 design, and they once again redesigned his spines to be more closer to like the uh, the, the Heisei or the uh, the Final Wars spines. But upon closer inspection, no, it's it's just the Final Wars Godzilla, and it's it's a new mold from Bandai America. Yeah, and not only is it a new mold from Bandai America, it's a very inaccurate mold because they made him fat. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, that doesn't look like a Final Wars Godzilla. But yeah, you, you look right there. It says Godzilla 2004, 2004 and yeah. wow, why did they make him fat? <laughs> yeah, that's nuts. That is pretty, pretty nuts. But I'm excited for the Kong figure. I'm very excited for the Kong figure. Do you think this is uh, leading into the Godzilla versus Kong 
stuff? Oh, definitely, definitely. I I certainly hope that uh, that we'll be getting images here soon of the uh, pretty much anybody uh, who's who's doing the uh, Godzilla vs Kong merch, be it pl- uh, Playmates toys, NECA, uh, Bandai, obviously, since they have a Kong figure. Finally, it's. It's basically leading to to a lot of promise. Is is what I'm trying to get out of here. So it's, it's it's very promising. Oh, uh, we're we're heading to the promised land. Chase, what was the other figure? The one you decided to hold from us? Um, I didn't decide to hold. I just kind of forgot about it. Um, <laughs> the, the other picture. Nice comeback, so I brother. Say, I was going to say it, it's interesting that Bandai America is choosing to do Kong Skull Island especially when Godzilla versus Kong is the next big thing. However, going into that, uh, one of the pictures I just sent you guys is another Kong figure from Bandai. It's... And it is a totally re-different done package and everything. And the rumor is, is that is a Godzilla versus Kong figure from Bandai, uh, a, a, a variation of Kong. And people think it's like old man Kong. Uh, nothing else has been really posted on it, but it's it's like different it's white packaging um it's, it is very blurry you can yeah, see that, anything about it yeah it, it's hidden for a reason um or, but in front of it are some tw- some godzilla legendary figures that are in front of it as well some bandai figures i see that destroyer they, i think i see guy again 2004 and, de- and destroyer and destroyer yeah um that's totally so, yeah i was i was gonna say though is that uh, there could be a chance that they're they're holding something off in secret, and uh, we could be seeing Godzilla versus Kong stuff pretty soon. Um, well, well, so I I haven't been paying much attention to NECA. Has NECA unveiled anything Godzilla related, or is it more of their other stuff? NECA has, and this is actually interesting. NECA, Randy, if you will, has claimed that not only do they not have the rights for Godzilla versus Kong figures. They uh, have it. They absolutely have no desire to put figures out You're for Godzilla vs. Kong. He said that on Twitter. He has no. They have no plans of putting figures out, and they do not have licensing. Someone else has the license for figures for uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. Do you think that's? Oh, uh, do you think that's boy, somebody Randy. being bitter? Do you think that's a bitter statement, or he just doesn't care? I think he just oh, doesn't care. No, he just doesn't care. Uh, when when Randy says something like that, he just doesn't care. Um, I, I went over how NECA works before. Right. Like, if, if NECA doesn't have the rights, or if they think that the figures aren't marketable, they won't bother. That's right. That was last podcast. Get the two-pack, 1955. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the snap. Uh, Randy, what are you doing? You know, it, it makes sense, though. When you look at it, uh, it, it monetary, it, it's going to make sense because outside of, like, hardcore collectors that collect any and everything that NECA puts out, it's just the fan base that's getting these things. You know what I mean? So we don't know what the cost of production is, uh, you know, against the well, cost of... According to they, Randy, it's a lot if they didn't want to make a King of Dora. <laughs> right, exactly, <laughs> yeah. bro, exactly. <laughs> So, I I mean, like, I get it. And I guess uh, there's more nostalgia and shit like, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade game version figures. And that's cool. I love that. I love the arcade game. I love the old cartoon. I get that. I'm also not paying $197 for a fucking two-pack with Leonardo and Shredder. Bye-bye. You know what I'm saying? Uh, But I would absolutely pay close to $200 for Gigantus and Anguirus. From Godzilla Raids again. No doubt. In black and white. Give it to me. And here's my money. But I digress. That was last podcast. Um, so yeah. I, I, okay. So NECA is not going to mess with Godzilla vs. Kong. Um, and, and, and I, I you wonder wonder if, if, oh, go ahead, Andrew. I, uh, I wonder if they showed off anything about their, uh, their, their burning Godzilla. Or their 64, uh, their 64 mold at Mirror Comic Con. I, 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 I'm surprised no images have, have popped up about that. I, I haven't seen anything personally. Um, 
However, I was going to mention that I myself am actually relieved NECA is not doing Godzilla vs. Kong figures because I honestly, I have issues with NECA. Not, I mean, they're just personal issues. I really don't like their figures. Um, so I'm actually excited if someone else comes around um, and does um, some the Godzilla vs. Kong figures that are affordable at price. I mean, even if it's just Bandai, you know, I'd be fine with that. Um, I'm just going to throw this out there. I'd really like to get it if Marlin picked up. Oh, oh, stop the press. That would be end. But while we're talking about figures, I really, 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 because I think we've all seen this here. Who is doing that prototype of Behemoth figure? Figure? Oh, uh, that'd be YMSF. That looked fantastic. I thought it was oh, yeah. dope. Yeah, um, I think they're still in the final phases, but it is coming out probably soon. So we're going to get a behemoth figure. <laughs> Dope. I'm down. I'm buying it. You know day one I'm going to pre-order that. $10. <laughs> it's right, available. $10 right now. Make it a bold prediction. King Kong. What, but let me rephrase that. Kong, because he's going to get the name King at the end of Godzilla vs. Kong. Because unfortunately, and I... I said we were going to talk about this in the last podcast. I said I never did this before, but we're going to give you the tagline for next week. At the end of Godzilla vs. Kong, Kong is going to defeat Godzilla to become King Kong. I'm going to vomit. I'm going to throw up everywhere. I'm going to burn down. Da- I'm not burning the theater down. Don't take me seriously. That's not true. But I will buy a copy of that movie just to burn it. I did it with Shin Godzilla, and I'll definitely do it if you ruin my Godzilla, you son of a bitches. Don't make it that way. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, that, that was another thing, too, they were talking about. Um, apparently, some of the things that, if they were true, they were talking about, like, Godzilla versus Kong and how it's going to be an equal thing for the monsters. Right. Because, oh, that was the thing I wanted to explain. It was announced... That uh, uh, legendary, they, they at the licensing expo in Russia uh, that they had over the uh, two weeks ago uh, explained that they absolutely intend on making more movies after Godzilla vs Kong, and at the looks of it, as of right now, they said that it's in the lines of actually happening. Um, and he said that they have interest in making. Uh, not only more Godzilla movies, but also trying to make new Kong movies as well. Right. Well, that, th- there's one thing: being an interest in doing it and actually having it ready to go. Like Marvel has things ready well, to go. Yeah, of course. You know they're not going to be actually making those movies right now. But, right. And I like that like, idea, but that's something we've also touched upon. Like, I'm pretty sure hmm. Legendary has a, 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 a slew of movies that they want to do. They want to build the MonsterVerse. Why call it a MonsterVerse with only two marquee and, monsters? And, but what I what I want to point out is that he made it seem as if, regardless of Godzilla versus Kong's box office, they have been green litted. They have gotten the green light to continue. That's what he was basically saying. And that's cool. And I honestly believe what they should do. This is what I sh- what I think they should do. In that regard, is now take the Toho template. Okay, and they they knocked it out of the park with Fifty Four Gojira. Then they started making other monster movies. That is what Legendary should do. And then every now and then, have a Kong movie, have a Godzilla movie. But it, it, this is just the way I think about it. I if, go in to see a, movie, a monster movie. Right. If they have the if if they have legitimate plans to continue, and they're like, "Yo, we're gonna do this," right? If we, I would totally do random other monsters. They introduced that to us. Hell, they introduced that to us in Godzilla 2014 with the Mutos. Now, I'm not saying make a Muto movie or a Skull Crawler movie, but Behemoth is popular. We just talked about him getting his own figure. I, they, I could just see the title now, The Mighty Behemoth. That's what I'm saying. So you can do that. Like That's where I would go. I would do that. And then every now and then, here's your marquee movie. Bam, there's Godzilla. Bam, there's Kong. You know what I mean? Uh, so if they do anything like that, that's what I hope they would do. I'm not saying that's what they're going to do. That's what I would hope because I'm telling you right now, 
Godzilla King of the Monsters, it's not fatigue, but nobody wants to see it. And that's a, that's a damn shame. But it's a fact. You know what I mean? So if they were like, oh, we're going to continue this and we're going to give you Kong and Godzilla and Kong, it's not going to work. It's not going to work at all. We're going to go see it. And that's the end of that. And it's going to get, they're going to have to go to Sumation, which I won't be mad at. They're going to have to go unless, to Sumation. Unless Godzilla versus Kong becomes like a surprise, it becomes as, a, I mean, it definitely should be a big box office hit. Ideally. Ideally. You know, but, the you know, and I honestly think that it definitely seems like it could be. I definitely feel like Godzilla versus Kong, when that trailer pops out, I definitely think more people are going to see that than they saw King of the Monsters. I think so, too. Only because you had a Kong movie standalone and a Godzilla movie standalone. And now you're putting those two together. It makes sense that people are going to be curious they did. They they and, and this this actually works in favor of your argument. Maybe people didn't see Godzilla King of the Monsters because they was like, well, Dan Kong introduce it. Those the 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 people who saw Kong, like whatever the percentage was that didn't see King of the Monsters, right? Because Kong made more money than King of the Monsters, right? And they're like, well, wait, where's Kong? What I, they set that up though? Godzilla was there. What's going on? And I'm not gonna see this, right? The normies, the ones who don't know the yeah. lore. Now you see Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah, that ab- that absolutely gives credit to your. I argument. mean, it just advertises a SmackDown of a film. You exactly. know, exactly. It's like, oh shit. You but got it, also, it Kong. also goes back to again. I still don't think it was that people just weren't interested. I think it was just the marketing for King of the Monsters was very strung out over that course of time, almost a year later. You know, when it got announced in July, then came out in May, and I just think it got so strung out that people lost interest. Yeah, I mean, either way, the movie's out, and we can't even go back to argue that point. Yeah, exactly. It, it happened. Um, what happened happened. I think that they pull off a good trailer for Godzilla vs. Kong, get people excited, come out in March, and it throws a, it throws a good punch at the box office. You know, and then cool, I'm excited. However, I will say I do not think. If they do a monster verse, if they if they have Godzilla not in these movies, if they do other solo monster movies, I don't see. I'm not confident if those movies would be successful. It's got to be low budget. It's got to be low budget. You're not paying for a name. You're not paying any other company for the name. Toho doesn't own the rights to Behemoth. Uh, uh, Michele Bombebe, for instance, none of them. So legendary can do what they want. They just cannot. They, what they gotta do, and I hate to say, use this as an out. They gotta do Pacific Rim Uprising as opposed to Pacific Rim, or whatever <laughs> Guillermo del Toro wanted. Three hundred. They have to make smaller movies with these unknown characters. If they do that, and they can flip, if they if they get make a movie fifteen million, twenty million dollars. That's what they. That's what it costs, and they could make. A hundred million dollars. This thing continues for sure, for sure. And the way they can do that is because they can utilize these unknown characters. We don't know these characters. All we know from these characters are they in this movie and they were at site sixty something or site seventy something. That's all we know. We don't know the history, and that is the beauty of it. And they can go for broke anyway. Before we continue, because I really want to get into this uh, last part. Gam Gams, anything you got to say about this last topic? Not really. See, that's why I love you, Gam Gams. You're a man of many yet seldom words. I love you for that, bro. I love you. He's for very that. selective about what he says. He's a smart man. Very smart. He's like, I'm not putting myself out there. You jerks get, get ripped up on the internet. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I learned. I learned my lesson about putting myself out there for the fandom to throttle on. Back in the GBA days. All right. <laughs> Rest of pepperoni, Anthony. That's twice we mentioned GBA. All right. Last but not least, we're going to get off the Godzilla topic. We're going to get off the con topic. All and that's probably gone. the topic I'm the most excited about, to be honest. And let's, Shame. Let's do this. The last 10 minutes of this podcast. Let's go with a broke. So, a couple of podcasts to go. 
Chase had mentioned something that I thought it was a video game. I had no idea. I thought it was a video game tie-in. Apparently it wasn't. And that is Jurassic World Battle at... Big Rock. Big Rock. Oh my god, it's a short film. It's not a fan film. It is licensed by Universal. It, it has the Jurassic World moniker. It is a Jurassic World movie in about eight to nine minutes. And it was and it was it was directed by the guy who directed who directed, directed by Colin Trevorrow. Colin Trevorrow. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I watched it this weekend, this past weekend. I uploaded the last week's Godzilla block quality. I sat down in my chair, put the Xbox on YouTube, started going through it, and I said, "What the hell is this?" I did, I thought it was a fan film, and I'm looking at the uh, you know the the user yeah. or whatever the name. And I'm like, but it says Universal. Why would Universal put up a fan belt? What the fuck? I click. Man, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. That, that was better than Fall of Kingdom. That is where, that is exactly where Jurassic World 3 needs to go. It was good. It made so much sense. The, oh my God, just living in a world where dinosaurs now exist alongside you the way stray cats and dogs do. Oh my god, genius. I loved it. I loved it. But that's enough gushing for me. I'm going to start with you, Gam Gams, because I know Chase got a lot to say, so I'm going to end with him. Gam Gams, what did you think? Oh my goodness. I saw this day one. I did not see it like the minute it dropped, but I did say see it the day that it dropped. And it it was mind-blowing the uh the 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 basic claustrophobia of the family just sitting in the trailer waiting for something to fucking happen that they're oh just God. like don't don't say anything don't do anything to get its attention and then the baby starts crying oh. and oh boy, and the best boy, part they shouldn't have had the kid <laughs> no wait, but the best part about that is there's so much going on you forget about the baby and then the baby Ooh. cries, and you're like, oh, my God. Oh, now, sorry. now I am among the people. I know <laughs> this is practically child abuse, and I'm not condoning child abuse, but when you're in a situation where a dinosaur that eats meat is right outside your, your trailer, cover the fucking infant's mouth, okay? Don't lull it to, to be quiet. Cover it <laughs> Yeah, at that point in time, take your sock off, shove it right in the kid's kid. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, shut the up. Dad's kid. probably the thinking I should have worn rubber at that point. The, kid can, the kids go into fan therapy regardless of the situation, okay? Oh, my God. Oh, I, I loved it. it. It was like you, you nailed it, the claustrophobia. I didn't even think of that, and that's exactly where my head was, was like they're in this tiny little... Uh, uh, RV. It, it's a yes. Yeah, they're they're in this RV that the that the Allosaurus can just knock over at any moment, and it does. Oh, and then and, and then when he actually starts destroying it, like it's just madness and genius rolled into one. I loved it. Oh yeah, it 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 literally brings a feeling of like Jurassic Park has not been this scary yet since the original. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It has not been this scary since the original, and I loved it. If Colin Trevorrow is going to bring a t the, the the tone and the the fear <laughs> that he brought to this this little short film in Jurassic World three, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. And I also cannot wait to get the figures that oh. are at Walmart right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, yeah, they the have the Allos line of Mattel's <laughs> Jurassic World figures. There's one of both the Allosaurus from Beth. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, my good friend Gam Gam Z1 has a severe problem. And only you <laughs> can help him with this problem by donating a penny, a nickel, a dime, a quarter, maybe a dollar, maybe three dollars to the Gam Gam Go Help Me Fund. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I'll tell you, brother, I love you to death. But if I ever meet you in real we ever I ever go to your house, I'm taking some of your toys. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Don't I don't want to get away. Shoot. 
I, 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 I wouldn't even I get away. I will let you touch them, but you cannot take them. Hey, as long as we can make a freaking movie together, that'd it, be awesome with, with the toy. I, I'm down. Uh, well, Jay, let's make a stop motion movie. 10 out of 10. It'll take forever, but... Uh, fuck it, we'll do it. Chase, I know for a fact because you are not only my resident go-to guy when it comes to Godzilla. I love my Godzilla. Yam Yam loves Godzilla. But you're up all night looking at the Godzilla stuff. But you are also my number one Jurassic Park fan. Like, I've said it a million times. I like it, but I'm not enamored with it. When Growing up, I loved dinosaurs. So Jurassic Park, when it came out, that should have been if this is it. And I was like, ah. I like the Lost World better. I even like Jurassic Park 3, Blasphemy, better. Just, but that's just me. The books are great. The books are great. The books are great. Um, but Chase, you you had brought this up, and I swear to God, I thought you were talking about a video game, and it wasn't, and it blew my mind. So when you saw it, honestly, as the resident Jurassic Park franchise fan, where, like, where do you put this? Is this is this one of the best things that's come out of the franchise? Um, I definitely see it as one of the uh, the the best step forward for Jurassic World three. Uh-huh. Um, I, I, I knew about Battle at Big Rock, Big Rock for months, um, months, 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 months. So when it finally dropped, I was waiting online. I was waiting. I wasn't doing nothing. I I, I knew when it was going to drop, and when that thing was a second before it was going to drop. I was watching it. I was I was loving it. I was watching it. Man, uh, Colin Trevorrow has said many times um, in the past couple of months that he's taking Jurassic World 3 into a tone that he wanted to do with... He wants to resemble Jurassic Park with. He says he's taking it into that dark science fiction tone. Battle at Big Rock uh, not only was a staple of that, but it also was just a minor piece of what he says he has planned. Um, Especially when the Allosaurus uh, spoilers, for those of you that haven't seen it, um, is trying to eat the baby, uh, the baby uh, Nautosaratosaurus. Thank you. That's its name. uh, I think it's Nautosaratops or Nautoceratops or something like that. I know it's one of those. It's not a Triceratops. Uh, I just can't pronounce the name. Right. It only um, had a horn on its uh, nose and not on its... uh... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, I think it's a Natoceratops, if I'm if I'm right. Let's just say it's one of those. Uh, but anyways, when the Allosaurus is trying to eat that, Colin Trevorrow basically said that it didn't eat it because it's 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 basically you know there's only so much they can do for a TV film, and they thought that would be pretty graphic. But he said in the movie, Jurassic World Three is not going to hold back. So. I'm excited to see where he's taking this, but the thing is, what does it for me is that recently there was a big screening in L.A. for Jurassic World uh, with Colin Trevorrow and a whole bunch of cast members, and Colin Trevorrow has confirmed that in Jurassic World 3, not only will Laura Dern and Jeff Goldblum be returning, but also Sam Neill, Dr. Alan Grant, will be joining them. And I am excited Way more excited than I should be about this because, I mean, come on, it's Alan Grant. I'm hyped. You you have all you have the three main characters from the first movie, except you know John Hammond. You know, rest in peace. Uh, look, I, I'm on board. Um, I and I said this multiple times. I'm more excited for Jurassic World three than I am Godzilla versus Kong, and I still <laughs> am. Um, I, I still am more excited for Jurassic World three. You know, and I, you know, look when Dr- Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom came out, when I knew it was coming out, instantly in that month, September, I started putting out. I started watching Jurassic Park nightly, and I still do. I watch Jurassic Park every night. I put it on either a background noise or actually watch it. Uh, you know, I still I still do that. That's just how much I'm a big I'm, I'm a Jurassic Park fan. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, a Godzilla and Jurassic Park to me are almost neck and neck. Uh, next is Predator. Uh, I'm a big Predator fan. Uh, Alien 2. So that's where I, I sit. So my excitement for Jurassic World 3 is un, is immeasurable. <laughs> and uh, Battle Bid Rock, Big Rock was a fun fan film. Um, and I'm excited to see where Colin Trevorrow takes this. 
Um, it also is basically being said that Jurassic World 3 at the moment isn't in line to be the final film as it was originally going to be. So I think Universal has struck a new deal with Trevorrow, hopefully. Uh, but there's been a lot of talks about it lately, too, that they're also trying to do other forms of media. They have the Netflix kids film coming out called Camp Cretaceous. That's right. Uh, they have... Um, they have some uh, other types of uh, games coming out in the future. Uh, they have the Jurassic World Alive game right now that I'm a frequent player with, that I love it. It's fun. Uh, they have new um, figures coming out. Quick they, interjection. Uh, what's up? Quick interjection. Um, do you play the, uh, Jurassic, uh, the Jurassic World video game on the PS4? Yeah, I have it. I love it. Okay, cool, because I, I was thinking about getting that. Um, yeah, are they, they making they, anything close to that? Or are they making more console games or just more? There, more there is a rumor that a sequel to Jurassic World Evolution is coming out for mm -hmm. uh, Jurassic World 3. But that's 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 just a rumor, though. That hasn't been really confirmed yet. Uh, it's just a thing on Reddit they're talking about. But um, I also wanted to mention that there is, a, in the line of the talks, that they're talking about also doing like an anthology type series. Um, for like Netflix or something like that, which would, will be kind of interesting. I believe that because with the with the children's show coming on Netflix, I could totally see, and this is absolutely genius, especially on Netflix part. You have Disney right now about to come out with Disney Plus, and you know they're gonna kill it because they've got not only their Disney brand, but they've got the Marvel stuff and Star Wars stuff. So you know that right now Netflix is like, we need something. The Jurassic Park kids show is a step in the right direction because if they wanted to get down with Universal and say, okay, listen, we're going to put out, let's say, 75% of the cost to produce this Jurassic Park world show, like a legitimate live action show, dude, it's because that's a draw. That is a draw. That is a major draw. Jurassic Park is a franchise that will never end. It won't. It might take hiatuses like we had. Like they did. <laughs> but it is something that would it, it can absolutely go on. And even though I didn't like Last Kingdom or Fallen Kingdom, the setup and what this uh, battle at Big Rock or whatever, oh my God, it is perfect. It's perfect. And now and it, that's what it's, it's, it, it's awesome that you say that because when I was watching it, I was actually thinking, I don't know if Ray's going to like this. Oh, I'm, I I'm it. glad that I'm wrong about them. I, I, I loved every minute. It, it felt like the very first season, the very first, uh, I wouldn't say first episodes, I would say when Rick Grimes in The Walking Dead got to base camp in the first season of Walking Dead. That's what it felt like to me. It was the unknown. Oh, wow. It's the unknown. So you're at base camp. These people are camping. They're having a good old time. Everything is working. Hey, hey, Roger, or whatever the guy's name is, don't show my kid how to use a crossbow. And that was, you know, that came back around and helped out the whole thing. But it felt like that. But then when you saw the people running from the window, right? Like, and that's just that's just great shot selection and, and thought process. When you they're looking out the window, what's going on? What's going on? And you see the people jet just running, running, running. You don't even see them running into the campus or wherever. They're just booking it. It's because there's yeah, they're getting the safety. Right. There's <laughs> something around. And then you think, oh, you're holding yourself, you're like, oh my god, what's coming? Oh my god, it's a T-Rex. It's a T-Rex. It's a it's a herbivore. What the hell is that? But it was great. It was just yeah, I loved it. I loved it. And as, as, oh, yeah. a, as a fan of dinosaurs, seriously, as a, the reason why I love Godzilla is because he's a fucking dinosaur. As a fan of dinosaurs, I love this. This, to me, was one of my favorite Jurassic Park world, uh, Jurassic franchise things all time. It, it, it's Devin did, Man. It might be the, you, my number did one Did you guys happen to see the stuff in the credits? That the was video. the best oh, part. Yeah. I to, so, that was my favorite part. Dude, so, dude driving down the highway and the stegosaurus just walking through acting like he's a deer just walking past the road uh, not even giving a no damn. no no what what we finally got what we finally got the payoff to jurassic park 2 with the copies that was the yeah. best part i was, I was gonna say when she's being chased when the little girl's being chased i love that i laughed so hard at that it. or like 
the National Geographic thing with with the great white taking the seal and he's he's jumping out of the water and then oh up here comes the Mosasaurus. I, I saw that coming a mile away. I could have actually done without that because they showed that already in Jurassic World. So, but I met. I'm not mad at it because they showed it in the wild. I actually like that, and I like the beginning when. And this is when I was like the same fan film when the universal symbol turned around, and you know it's universal, it's the world, and then the Earth had all the lights light up. No, and it was the, the T Rex. So the oh. T Rex skeleton. Genius, no, I man. Love that. Oh, good. Pure I genius. Also, oh, I also laughed really hard at the wedding. When the woman's having the wedding and she releases the doves and the Toronto dog comes down stuff. and takes the bird. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> no. it, 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 it was perfect. And you know what? That's actually a perfect way to end this podcast by talking about the ending of this fan film. Not fan film, but this officially licensed Jurassic Park franchised film. Thank you, Colin Trevorrow. Thank you all out there. But before we get into thanking y'all, thank you, G73 Chase, for being on this podcast with us. Oh, absolutely. Thank you guys for allowing me. <laughs> absolutely. And Gang Gam Z1, thank you so much again for being on the podcast with us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this last segment gushing about this fat film. <laughs> I, I think we all did. And thank you all out there in G Show Land for listening to this Godzilla block party. I am G1. We'll be back next week and we out of here. Peace. <laughs>